I hadn't been to the DMV in years, but I needed to get a new driver's license. I was dreading those horrible long lines. But to my surprise, there was no line. I was directed to a computer. There, I entered the reason for my visit. A ticket was printed out and I took a seat. As I waited, I noticed that the numbers were not given out in sequential order. Instead, the color of the ticket and number assigned was based on the type of service I requested. I got called up three different times by three different employees. I had to take a test, get my picture taken, and then do the final paperwork. That was all done using that single ticket. When I left, that same ticket number and color would be used again for someone new. It was a good system. Thinking about it, it works a lot like DHCP. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain the dynamic host configuration protocol, DHCP. To communicate and connect to the internet, every device or node needs an IP address. In a local network, like an office or business, IP addresses need to be unique and in the same subnet. Just like at the DMV, you need a ticket with a specific color and number before information can be exchanged. How do devices in a local network get an IP address? One option is to manually assign them. This is often done for a few addresses in a network for reachability, but probably not an option for them all. It would be a huge task to assign every address, make sure there are no duplicates, and note when an address is available again. Therefore, the most popular option is to use DHCP. Some routers, including the Cisco RV series, come with a DHCP server configured and enabled by default. The routers set aside a pool of addresses for DHCP to use, as well as a separate pool of addresses for static addressing. With a DHCP server, IP addresses are automatically assigned, removed, and reused as needed. The server makes sure there are no duplicates and that the address is in the same subnet. The process is seamless. This was a very high-level overview of DHCP. If you want more details about the process of DHCP, just click on the link in the description for part two. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.